I went to the University of South Carolina for my bachelor's, which I studied international business and marketing and did a French minor. And then continued on after I graduated in 2020 to pursue my master's in international business. I did a dual degree program there, spending one year in Columbia at Darla Moore and then one year at ESCP um, in Paris, France, where I completed my thesis and my degree. And I specialize in international market development. And um, then at ESCP in Paris, I studied digital transformation. And following the end of my master's, um, I started working at Euromonitor International, and now I'm a current associate consultant here at Euromonitor based in Chicago. After I graduated from my bachelor's in international business, um, it was in 2020, so it was the middle of the pandemic, which wasn't the best time to join the workforce, unfortunately. And I knew I always wanted to pursue a master's, but I always pictured myself working for a few years and then leaving the workforce. Um, but at this point in time, economically, that didn't make as much sense because um, the job offerings at that point in time weren't something that I was as interested in and there were just less opportunities at the time. And so I started looking into master's programs since I was already familiar with the international business program at USC, it was a top choice for me. Um, and so I looked around a few different ones. Um, I looked around mostly in the East Coast related to like international relations and international business. And Darla Moore was um, definitely the leader in that. Um, so it was the easiest decision to stay put where I was. And luckily I got in and yeah, it was a really, the best two years of my life. So <laughs> it was a good decision for me in the end. In undergrad, when I was studying international business, we also had to have another major, a secondary major in a different business function. So it was international business and finance, or I did international business and marketing. And so you took the same business classes in your business functional major, um, but then you added on the additional layer of international business classes, which were a lot around like geopolitics, international strategy, like international marketing, communications, and then you also had to have a minor in a foreign language. And while I loved my functional business classes, I really, really loved those international business classes. It was a smaller cohort of all IB majors that were studying a bunch of different functional majors. And it was a lot of case studies, a lot of debates, discussions, a lot of geopolitics. Um, and those the core classes that I really enjoyed. They were also the most difficult classes that I took. And so my master's of international business was more like only those kinds of classes. So, but at a next level. So um, instead of having a lot of those functional business classes, it was like those were woven into um, the international business classes and it was everything had an international context to it. So um, while like some people would have been taking um, like finance courses in their masters, everything like had an international tone to it. And then additionally, undergrad international business, it was majority Americans. And then whenever you moved into a master's, it was maybe like half and half, half Americans, half not, which was a really excellent addition to, to the masters. my family were really big into the football games so um my friends that were not americans they would always come to my family's tailgate and then go to the football games and it's really funny because i think then when i left and went to france the the international students started putting on their own tailgates and so they sort of uh yeah the next year they put on their own tailgates and my family said we just got an invite to their tailgate like they're really like they know what they're doing now and so i think they really enjoyed um that aspect um of american football and, and sports and stuff and it's just a nice thing to do um because i think it's an easy thing to get involved in um, because everyone's so excited about it. Um, and it's a great way to recruit more Gamecocks, you know, if, if they're if they're the first university they, they have an experience with in the US, then they're easy converts to Gamecock fans. So yeah, for sure. 
studying in two countries in two years, like I could talk about, you know, international financial reporting standards or like data privacy. But I think the biggest lesson that I learned was the importance of my peers in the program. Um, I learned that really early on and the other students and their experiences in the program were so rich um, and they added so much value to the classroom and to projects, and to my personal life. Um, and my peers really challenged me, um, which was a major growth lesson for myself. And I was able to create these like amazing relationships that I think will last me a lifetime and have helped me professionally a lot um, and personally. So yeah, um, I would say the network that you build in your masters is definitely the top lesson that I learned. And we're still in contact weekly, um, helping people with jobs or just talking about personal lives or talking about um, things we can relate while we're all in our roles now or some of us have pursued PhDs now. So um, yeah, it's the network is one of the biggest lessons and how important that is moving forward outside of the masters. So the global strategy certificate option, um, it seems like it provided a well-rounded experience and something that I'll be able to apply across any industry that I decide to work in after graduating. So that was a major factor in pursuing the strategy certificate, but also all the courses that, are, that were required for the certificate, I was already interested in, so it just made sense. Um, but I think whenever you can leave a program with certification saying that you've um, received training in something, whatever that is, we have other certificates, I think um, there's like a data analytics one as well. Um, that's another piece of added value that you can walk away with. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons that I, that I chose to pursue the certificate. And most classes that they offer in the masters, some combination of them add up to a global strategy certificate. So um, I think that kind of speaks to the caliber of classes and how strategic they are um, in general. So. It's, it's really a nice program and that you can really like curate it based on your interests and what you want to take away from it in the end. Yes, so my favorite class looking back was, and I was talking about this class yesterday with, at work, because somebody that I, or that I collaborated with at work knew the professor that taught it. So there's one professor at the Moore School and she used to be the the Dean. Um, and now she just teaches this course and it's the design thinking course and they teach it over a week and it's a design thinking sprint. And it was the most viable class I think I've ever taken. It was amazing showing up at the business school sometimes like depending on what time your call was because we did a whole design sprint over a week, we had a real life client, a real like Fortune 50, I think, company. Um, and we had a business problem to solve for them with design thinking. And so we start off on a Monday. And then by the end of the week, we have the solution for them. And this is a global project. So sometimes we would have calls with stakeholders in Europe, Asia, so it, all over the world. So sometimes we'd have calls like late at night, early in the morning. So that was a good taste of what really working internationally looks like. And then we did a whole design sprint from top to bottom um, with our cohort, which was really good team building and super collaborative because we have people from all over the world and you're working with all these different types of working styles and backgrounds and expertise. Um, and it was really hard. It was long hours, um, but it was so much fun. And in the end, we had this amazing deliverable and product that we were proud of. and you really felt like this team camaraderie. Um, and you also learned a lot about design thinking, which is something that I've been able to carry into um, my role. I'm interviewing people a lot in market research and um, I learned a lot of these like interview skills um, in this class and um, about different working styles. And then collaboration, which is just transferable across any industry and any role that anyone's in. And, it's something that I, in the midst of it, everyone was like pulling their hair. It's so hard. We have so it's so many hours, but in the end, everyone was so happy and it was a lot of fun. And I think something that a lot of people look back on really fondly. Design thinking is starting with a business problem and 
having multiple steps along the way. And so he sort of starts from scratch and the premise is supposed to be that you can solve any problem with these steps, no matter the problem, even if you're not an expert. So ideally you would have a problem where you know nothing about and you start at a beginner's mindset and you interview people and you sort of move through this process. And at the end you have this final deliverable, this product, the solution. Um, and it's based on collaborating with the team, pulling in information from others and doing all of these sort of quirky exercises to um, arrive at a solution. And it's a really out of the box way of working and thinking. And this sort of out of the ordinary style in the end is supposed to pull out these revolutionary ideas that are supposed to disrupt, if you will. A couple ways this has come back. So I did an internship in between my first and second year of masters. And when my company found out that I had done a design thinking sprint, the head of strategy for that business unit actually flew me up to headquarters to run a design thinking sprint with her whole team because it was something they'd been wanting to do and hadn't had anyone who knew how to do it. So it's nice whenever you have experience in something that business leaders hear about all the time, but they don't really know exactly how that works for them or what it is. So that's the first way that it applied to me, but in a more concrete way in my current role. Um, I do research consulting, so I solve a lot of uh, projects for clients and I, a lot of the times the industry I'm not an expert in. So I'll have to interview people to try to know what do I need to know about this industry immediately? Um, who do I need to talk to, to learn these insights, etc. And that's exactly the first step of design thinking. And so I'm sort of using that first step all the time with like uh, using a beginner's mindset and leading with empathy when I'm thinking about my end user or my client and what their problems might be and what information I can get to help solve that. So um, yeah, I use it a lot, I would say, in my current role, especially when trying to um, gather insights when I'm working. So I think I'm a bit biased when I talk about the culture at Draw the More because I'm a lifelong Gamecock. So I can't disentangle like Draw the More with the University of South Carolina. Um, but I think as someone who's in the business school there for, I guess, six years, um, like everyone at Darla Moore is really driven, um, which I think can be intimidating a lot. And I was intimidated at the beginning when I was a freshman. Um, but whenever you're a master's student, it's the most incredible environment because everyone is so challenging and really interesting and bright. Um, and then I think most importantly, the professors at Dollamore are incredible. They really get to know their students on a personal level and um, like have office hours to meet with them and really encourage that you sit down with them and tell them your personal interests and your experiences. And specifically the professors in the International Business Department at Dollamore are amazing in that they, many of them are top in their field in their area of research. And so each of them has their own area of expertise that's incredible. And they all have their own networks that they're always willing to plug students into as well. Um, and yeah, the professors really take a personal interest in their students and their success and, and want to see their students succeed and, and go where they want to go. And then they keep up with their students after they've left as well. Um, I mean, I have catch up calls with old professors quite often, which I think I don't hear my friends from other universities ever talk about. So yeah, I think that's my best to describe the culture there. On a personal level, I had amazing opportunities to travel like throughout and made amazing connections globally. So after graduating, I was able to see this international network of friends and peers and professionally, um, I was able to receive a few job offers. Uh, one in particular was from a dream company, which I was so excited about. Um, but I had options, which I think was important in the end. So looking back at 2020 when I was graduating, there were very few options and I felt like really forced into one area. 
Um, and then after my master's, I had multiple options and was able to um, decide what I wanted to do as a first step um, and decide what industry I wanted to start off my career in. And so ultimately, um, yeah, now I'm in a current role and applying things that I learned my master's nearly every day. And it's the only job I've ever had where I can see directly one-to-one -one applying what I learned in school to the real world, um, which I don't know a lot of, if a lot of people can say that. So having already gone to USC for my bachelor's, I was really familiar with the area. And I think the city itself is amazing because you have the feel of a smaller city, but this huge, so you have everything you could ever need, but it's not this massive or rolling city, but this huge university with this amazing culture that's around football and basketball and all students generally have this really big pride and school spirit like myself. Um, and the facilities themselves are incredible. They're brand new, whether it's the business school itself, which is really the best, I think, building on campus, the nicest, or the gym, like the wellness center, that's you know, like, there's a rock wall and multiple pools and it's just insane. Um, like the business school is new and beautiful and it's a place that I enjoyed spending most of my time. Um, and a lot of people really flock to that. And I think that um, you're, in a space that encourages collaboration. So that really like enhances the, the program altogether. And since Columbia is pretty small, there's not that much to do. Um, so you really make friends with those around you. And I think that's really special, but you are located in between the beach and the mountains. And so there's really good opportunities for weekend trips and little getaways. And generally you can fly and connect anywhere out of Columbia or Charlotte, North Carolina. So from a travel perspective, especially for those international students that wanna see more, um, I think it's really convenient for them as well. And I think also for those international students, it's a really nice taste of this big university feel. Um, but I think Columbia, South Carolina is mostly unique because of the people there. They really make it. I think it could be located anywhere and it would feel the same, but it's the people that really make it a super special place. Advice that I would give for prospective master's students, and maybe this is applicable to any type of studies, but I would consider what you're most interested in in a business context um, and then pull that to the forefront of your choice for your master's. And then if you can keep that interest as a core throughout your studies, I think it'll make it a lot more intentional in the end and everything will be more connected towards a common theme. Um, and also if you're not sure what that interest is yet or you're looking to pivot into business and maybe you didn't have previous experience in business, um, that this would also be a really good challenge um, to help you find that interest uh, and figure that out.